From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Jan. Yes, Jan. A minute ago after you left me here at my apartment, I got a phone call. Yeah? A threat. If I help you on this case, there'll be another accident. Huh? Like the one that happened to Bert. Fatal. To me. Jan. To you. Oh, Johnny, I'm afraid. Stay right where you are. I'm on my way over. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, attention Patrick McCracken... Pat, I'm addressing this to you instead of to the Southwestern Maritime Insurance and Liability because Southwestern's sole representative here in San Diego, California, Bert Parker, died yesterday in the hospital, presumably of an accident. But I don't believe it. I think it's because he knew too much about this case, the Jolly Roger fraud. Item 6270, cab fare and tip, from my hotel to the little apartment of Jan Penny, who had been Bert Parker's secretary before he was killed. Johnny Dollar, you all right? Come in, Johnny, quick. Easy now. Who was it threatened you over the phone? Did you recognize the voice? Uh, Yes. Well, who was it? I I don't know. Huh? It was the same voice that called Bert at the office and warned him before he was run down by that car and killed. But you don't know who it was? No. Oh, Johnny, I'm so scared. Please hold me. All right, all right. I don't mean that. It sounds like I'm trying it's to... It's okay, Jan. It's okay. Just take it easy. Here we are. Come on, dear. Sit down. Sit down. Here. Have a cigarette. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Johnny. I guess it's just been too much for a gal. Yeah, sure. I don't doubt it. I thought when I bought you a few drinks tonight, you'd be able to come back here and sleep and forget what's happened. Forget about Bert being killed. It's because he held up the claim on the Jolly Roger. Because he sent for you. That's why they're threatening you, too. Oh, Johnny, be careful. And you have no idea who they is? Of course I do. The same idea you have. The man who owned the Jolly Roger before she burned and sank. Paulus Zanagian. Just how much do you know about Zanagian? Only what Bert told me. He was an international crook, gun runner, spy, shipping magnet, international troublemaker. Yeah, yeah, and just about as welcome in any decent country of this world as the plague. Bert didn't want to insure the Jolly Roger. Certainly an appropriate name, all right. If ever there was an international pirate... Well, go on, Jen. Bert didn't want to insure it. $460,000, wooden hull and all, but he had to. Southwestern is a small company, Johnny, and the premium, two years premium in advance, was too much to turn down. So that was the clincher. Yes, Bert needed it so much. But then it burned and sank. Yes. When they submitted the claim, Zanagium himself. Oh? Yes, Johnny. It was Paula Zanagium himself who bought the policy and he made the claim. Demanded immediate payment. But when Bert decided to hold up until you could come out here and investigate... The warnings and the so-called accident that killed him. Yes. Now they're warning me. You. Johnny, why don't you give this up? Where is Zanagian now? Here in San Diego at the Larchmont. And you're sure it wasn't he who called you tonight, who called Bert and warned him? I'm sure. I would have known his voice, his accent. But, Johnny, I'm frightened. All right, now, look, look. Go on in there into your bedroom and sleep. No, Take a sleeping pill, whatever you like, but get some sleep. Look, there's nothing we can do tonight, and there'll be plenty for us to do tomorrow. But after that phone call, I... I'll stay right here on the sofa. And look, I've got this. (gasps) Have you any kind of a gun? No, Johnny. Well, now, go on in there, lock your windows, close the drapes, and get some sleep. That's orders. All right. Good night, Johnny. I hope Jan slept better than I did. Expense account item 7, 90 cents, taxi to police headquarters, first thing in the morning. I spent a solid hour talking with Detective Sergeant Joe Franklin. Yes, they were working on the hit-run death of Bert Parker. No, they hadn't come up with any leads. All he knew was that Bert had left his office late, was shortcutting his way through an alley to where his car was parked, had been knocked down when he reached the end of the alley. 
No witness, no tire marks, nothing. They'd questioned Jan Penny about possible enemies and come up with the same answers I did, but no evidence. Item eight, taxi to the Larchmont, where the desk clerk announced my arrival to the penthouse suite. Come in, come in, sir. I've been waiting for you to call on me. Mr. Zanagian? Uh, terribly distressing news about your colleague, Mr. Park. Uh, I feel... To... Oh, sit down, sit down, won't you? Thanks. Uh, tell me, sir, have the police found any clue as to who ran down and killed the poor man? Oh, you know that he died last night? Oh, yes, of course, within a few minutes of when it happened. But was Sergeant Franklin able to give you no inkling of who might have done it? Oh, do not look surprised, my boy. I not only know of your visit to police headquarters this morning, but of everything else you have done since your arrival here in San Diego. <laughs> well, that's very interesting, Mr. Zanagian. Yes, it is indeed. But I, I, I'm sure the reason for it is very obvious. Is it? Of course, my friend, of course. I am depending on you to see that prompt payment of my insurance on the Jolly Roger is made. After all, that is the only reason for your being sent here. Who told you uh, that? Therefore, I feel it my obligation to see that nothing happens to you, that you are given, shall we say, adequate uh, protection during the time you are here acting in my behalf. Mr. Zanagian, before <laughs> you go any... That is why I have made a trusted man responsible for watching over you at all times during your stay. Uh-huh. I suppose that's just a polite way of saying that you've had somebody taming me since I got here. Oh, oh, by the way, a lovely girl, Miss Penny, isn't she? And she was so devoted to Mr. Parker. Terrible shock to her, his death. Uh, you, your solicitude to her is to be highly commended. You really keep tabs on things, don't you? But now, let us get down to the business at hand. Yeah, let's. The loss of the Jolly Roger came at a most inopportune moment. My crew were testing some new equipment in preparation for a somewhat lengthy trip abroad. When the accident occurred, they sent her to the bottom out near the Coronado Islands. Just what kind of an accident was it? What? Oh, oh, forgive me, dear man. I forget you have not yet contacted the Coast Guard for the details of the whole affair. That's right, but how did but you... But I am certain you will. So why should I bore you with information you will only have to hear all over again from them? Suffice it to say, dear sir, that the loss of my beautiful yacht was due to some mechanical failure, so to speak. Uh, something with the electrical system, I believe it was. Yes, I do. But uh, my point to you is simply that I must have settlement of my claim without delay so that I can leave the United States as soon as possible. For where? Do you mind? Oh, no, 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 no. Of course I don't mind. But why bore you with my personal affairs? So urgent is my need for immediate settlement that I can only remind you that I am a most generous person, which is to say, I can assure you of ample reward for anything you may do to expedite payment to me of the now, just hold on a minute. I'm sorry, my dear sir. Oh, dear me, I'm sorry. I've seemed to monopolize the conversation, haven't I? Mr. Zanagian, let's stop beating around the bush. An insurance claim for $460,000 is investigated in any event. Bert Parker seemed to think there was something wrong with his claim. He said so, and apparently it cost him his life. The same threats that were made to him have been passed on to his secretary, Jan Penny, and to me. And if that doesn't make the whole case smell to high heaven... Oh, my dear sir. All right, sir. all right, now. Now you're trying to bribe me to make a quick settlement. So, mister, if I weren't suspicious of the whole thing before, you can believe me I am now. Oh, my dear Why man. anyone with your reputation for millions should be in such a hurry to get his hands on a few hundred thousand, I don't know. But if I were you, I'd sit back very quietly and prepare for a long wait to see if you get it at all. Oh, how unfortunate this attitude for you. That a threat? No, 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 dear boy, not at all. I, I am simply thinking of how much easier it could be for you. And, of course, profitable. Now, perhaps you will change your mind. Not a chance. Then, sir. Since settlement of my claim seems to rest entirely on your shoulders at the moment, and since someone, I can't imagine who, has seen fit to threaten you. And please, don't forget that, dear boy. Mr. Zanagian. Yes? I don't scare easy. It was pretty obvious that Paula Zanagian was used to having his own way, would stop at nothing to get it. Bert Parker had been right. I'd have to watch my step. I checked with Jan and grabbed a taxi to pay a visit to the Coast Guard. Lieutenant John Smith, believe it or not. You can take your choice, Dollar. Read the report on the burning and sinking of the Jolly Roger here or the copy I let Bert Parker have. I take it you talked to him. Parker's dead. What? Yeah, hit and run. 
after he received a couple of threats to lay off this case. You locked up Zanagi in yet? On what charges? Well, who else? That's a lot to go on. If he didn't sink that boat himself, I'm a wall-eyed monkey. You find out anything to back that up? No, not a thing. The Jolly Roger sank in about as bad a spot out there as could have been picked. It's deep, bad current, dirty water from onshore silt. We tried to send on divers, got nowhere. Hey, wait. I thought she went down in Mexican waters off the Coronados. Yeah, she did, but we supplied the divers or tried to. International cooperation, that sort of stuff. But we got nowhere. How'd you find out about it in the first place? One of our planes on routine patrol saw the puff from the explosion out over the water. By the time it actually got there, the hull was nothing but a mass of flames. Sank 10, 15 minutes later. What about the crew? The crew were lost, except for one kid, a cabin boy. Yeah, where's he? Mexican fishing boat out of Rosarito picked him up. He was in bad shape. The explosion had blown him clear. He's in the hospital in Tijuana. Well, look, wait, hasn't anybody talked to him? He was too badly hurt at first. But I spoke with the hospital just before you got here, and they think he might be able to talk by some time this afternoon. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's get down there. And I can't until later. Uh, look, have you got a car? No. You want mine? Well, sure, let's go. How far is it? Even within the speed limit, you can make it in a half hour. Out this way. The right. car's out in the lot in the back. Hey, look, you're mighty generous, Smith. I'll try to make this up to you somehow. <laughs> Forget it. I'd like to see you get the goods on Zanagian just as much as you would. I didn't like having him come into port here in the first place. And then when I learned that both Holland and Switzerland had tied up all of his funds... They what? Sure. In early last week's papers. That's why he needs the money. Well, oh, here's my car. And if you can learn anything down there, if I can be of any help, I'm on pretty good terms with it. Hey, Dollar. Oh, Some Mr. Money. Dollar. How oh, about that? My car and excellent chauffeur Artis here would have got you to Tijuana much more rapidly and comfortably than you might drive, I am hey, sure. Now, wait, wait, just a minute. What Which is why I'm... I came to meet you here. I knew you'd want to talk with the cabin boy who survived the accident to my ill-fated Jolly Roger. Oh, you did? Yes. However, I fear it is too late. What do you mean? As I was leaving my hotel, I heard from one of my, shall we say, associates. He informed me that he had just learned from one of his, shall we say, contacts in Tijuana. Well? Oh, alas, the poor cabin boy died only a few minutes ago. Pity, sir, isn't it? Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a dead man talks. And what he has to say isn't very pleasant, for it all adds up to just one more good, solid threat on the life of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.